Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. People are just now heading to the Tower of the Americas for the 10th annual 9-11 climb. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you what you need to know for the event. Plus, we're tracking new details on a man shot in his yard overnight. We'll tell you where and what police are saying about the suspects. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 74 degrees today. What is the rest of the day? What does the start of the work week look like? We are going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning. It is 6 o'clock. It is Sunday. It is September 11th. We're obviously going to check in with Camelli at the Tower of Americas. We're going to be talking about that moment of silence later this morning. But first, we're starting with the weather. Good morning. Good morning, y'all. Yeah, you know, there is actually some rain out there this morning, but mainly west of San Antonio. A cool front is going to move through today. Yes. But it's more so just going to dry us out and lower the humidity instead of lowering temperatures. So I've got to put the cool front in quotation marks there. That's technically what it's called. Okay, look outside right now with live cam. We've got uh, mostly clear to partly cloudy skies at the airport. It's 76 degrees. Since it on the south side 76 Kelly 74 JBSA Randolph 72 winds are generally calm this morning again take a look out to the west you can see that there's a shower right on the uh, Bandera and Kendall County line just to the southeast of Medina Lake and just to the west of Hondo right now this morning it's quiet around San Antonio but coming up we'll take a more in-depth look at that radar and temperatures this morning not too bad out there it's 76 in San Antonio but look up in the hill country it's 68 in Bernie 69 in Bolverde, 69 in Kerrville, 69 in Bandera. Feels a lot pleasant up in the, a lot more pleasant up in the hill country. So coming up in the forecast, here's what we're going to talk about today. Morning shower is possible, and this afternoon that cool front will drop humidity, making it breezy. This week we'll have nice mornings and warm afternoons. How cool will we get in the morning hours? I've got a look ahead coming up. Thank you, Sarah. Right now, first responders getting ready to climb the stairs of the Tower of America's all in an effort to pay tribute and remember the thousands who sacrificed their lives to save other people on 9-11. Can you believe that was 21 years ago? Camelia Wattis joins us live from the Tower. Camelia, what are you seeing? Well, Max, Sarah, the people are just now starting to check in right now. If you'll take a look, you can see that people are waiting in line right here. They have their gear. These firefighters, they have their gear. They're going to be wearing that when they go up and down and then up again, This the Tower of the Americas. This is the 10th year that they're doing this, and this is the largest climb in the country. Um, we're also seeing just people check in. I also understand that this is a bigger event than last year. Last year it was virtual, and so this year they're back in person. Now keep in mind the event does start at 8 a.m. We'll be there. We'll bring you the latest, and we'll show you what's happening later in the show. Max, Sarah? Thank you, Camelia. New this morning, San Antonio police say they have no suspects in an overnight shooting on the city's southeast side. A man in his 30s was shot in front of his home on Owasa Street just before 1230 this morning. That man taken to University Hospital with a gunshot wound to the leg. He's expected to survive. Police found two shell casings at the scene, but will interview the victim at the hospital for more information. This morning, the royal family announcing the state funeral for Queen Elizabeth is set it's set for September 19th. Until then, the public will have four days to pay their respects. ABC's Ines de Locotera reports from London on remembering the Queen. This morning, the Queen's coffin beginning its journey down to London after lying at Balmoral Castle, where the Queen passed on Thursday for staff to pay their respects. Today, the coffin traveling by road to the Palace of Holy Rood House in Edinburgh. This as we learn more about plans for the Queen's state funeral. The royal family announcing it will be held at Westminster Abbey on September 19th. That day also declared a national holiday across the UK. President Joe Biden and other world leaders are expected to attend. Meanwhile, on Proclamation Day, Charles III formally proclaimed king with lots of pomp and circumstance both in the UK and in Canada. For the first time since 1952, the British national anthem changing from God Save the Queen to God Save the King. And in a rare show of unity, the new Prince and Princess of Wales appearing alongside the Duke and Duchess of Sussex to view the tributes piling up outside of Windsor Castle. I think 
everybody hopes that the death of Queen Elizabeth will hopefully be able to start to repair some of the damage and divisions that have happened in the royal family. King Charles and Queen Camilla greeting well-wishers outside Clarence House, Prince Andrew and Princess Anne doing the same in Scotland. And the Queen's coffin will be transferred to London on Tuesday, where she will lie in state inside Westminster Hall for four days to allow the public to pay their respects. In de la Quatera, ABC News, London. Stopping your morning headlines, Ukrainian troops say they've beaten back Russian forces in the eastern part of the country, successfully retaking at least one major city. So far, Russia has not acknowledged a retreat. The defense ministry instead is saying that this decision was made to regroup their troops. The Ukrainian attack is being fueled by billions of dollars in military aid from the United States and other Western allies. Meanwhile, concerns continue to grow over renewed shelling causing more damage to a nuclear power plant the largest of its kind in Europe. Back here at the U in the U.S., up to 400 people in Colorado are homeless after an explosion in an apartment building. Firefighters in Aurora, Colorado, say three people went to the hospital with injuries, and now three to 400 people have to be relocated. Several nearby businesses also had to be evacuated at the moment. It's unknown what caused that blast. Time now, 6.06, 74 degrees out. Still to come on GMSA, an uninvited guest oh. makes an appearance at a birthday party. Whoa, look at that. The must-see video coming up. Happy birthday to you. That bear was uh, drinking a juice box, I think. I would go for Capri Sun, but that's just me. <laughs> After the break, have you gotten your flu shot yet, Sarah? No, not okay. yet. Okay. Why doctors are saying now is the best time to get one. 74 degrees at 6.06 this morning. Sarah Spivey said it, cool front. Does that mean scarves and PSLs? I don't know, she'll explain when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. So, have you got your flu shot yet? Well, health experts say there is no better time than right now. And to help get more people get their shot, UT Health hosted a pop-up clinic this weekend. More than 500 people were able to stop by the Dub Ferris Athletic Complex to get their annual flu shot. With COVID still part of our everyday lives, health experts want to make sure people don't forget about flu season. Just to make sure that they're not getting sick or overloading the hospital with, um, with those type of symptoms. And so we want to just be able to manage that in the community. Now, getting the flu shot minimizes your symptoms, helps you stay out of the hospital for treatment. Get the flu shot every year. Before the pandemic, we even had some doctors come here and administer the flu shot. I love that KSAT does that. They host it. You know, you walk outside. You don't have to go anywhere. Nope, it's Sign easy up. and it's simple. So simple. All right, it was beautiful shot of outside from yesterday, Sarah. Are yeah. we going to expect the same thing today? Uh, you know, actually, it's going to feel pretty good in the afternoon. You know, it is going to be warm, okay? We're still going to be in the 90s today. But with that front moving through the next few hours, we'll have lower humidity, which is really nice. Now, early this morning, especially west of San Antonio, you can see that we do have some showers out there this morning. Uh, right along that Bandera and Kendall County line in the southeastern edge of Bandera, just the southeast of Pipe Creek, right along 40 there. We've got one of those isolated showers and then to the southeast of Medina Lake and near Rio Medina, we've got some uh, moderate rain falling as well in pockets right along 2676 and uh, County Road 271. We've got some of that light rain to moderate rain there as well. Approaching Castroville, Castroville on the west side of town, you'll probably get some uh, isolated rain here within the next hour or so. And then near Dehennis, right along 90 between Hondo and Dehennis, that's where we have one of these isolated showers there as well. So as you can see, this is very isolated rain and most of it is west of San Antonio, even a light uh, to moderate rain shower there uh, near Lytle, right over Lytle right now. So if you're tuning in in Lytle, good morning to you. You're seeing some decent rainfall at the moment. Uh, but again, these are fairly isolated and and not really moving all that much there. They could easily drop a quick quarter of an inch of rain. As far as our rain timeline goes today, it's going to favor the morning hours, but even then as 
I just showed you, very isolated. So 20% chance through about 11 a.m. noon. And then in the afternoon, a stray shower is possible, but not likely. So keep that in mind. This morning hours are, are the best chance for rain out there. Otherwise, it is pretty muggy out there this morning. 76 degrees, dew points right near 70. Uh, and there are some clouds out there early this morning. However, it does feel nice in areas that are in the 60s right now. Kerrville, 69 degrees, 68 in Rock Springs, 69 in Yavaldi. It's 70 in Carrizo Springs, 71 in New Braunfels, 72 in Gonzales, 75 in Del Rio. Showing you the radar and satellite across the state of Texas, you can see that there's some showers west of San Angelo and north of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Here's where that cold front is right now. When we take a look at temperatures up to the north, it's pretty impressively chilly. 47 in Denver, 39 in Casper, Wyoming, and even a 20 degree difference from Lubbock down here to San Antonio. But unfortunately, we're not going to be seeing crazy cooler weather in San Antonio. Instead, there is a positive. It's going to feel a lot less humid over the next couple of days. Much drier air behind this front. So let me take you through the future cast here. We're looking at dew points. That front's going to move through right at about 10 to 11 this morning. It's going to drop our humidity. In the afternoon, dew points will be in the mid 50s in San Antonio. That is pretty pleasant. It's going to feel very nice outside, even though it will be a little bit warm. And even tomorrow in the afternoon dew points are going to be in the mid to upper 50s too which again is pretty pleasant but by about Tuesday afternoon, we're going to start to see Gulf moisture work its way back in. And by Tuesday evening, it'll be humid again around San Antonio. So we've got about this afternoon through about Tuesday afternoon to enjoy the lower humidity. Just to summarize everything I've said this morning, a 20% chance for some isolated showers, 81 degrees at 10, 86 at noon. After that front moves through, it'll be warm, 92 for the high temperature, but a bit breezy. Winds will be from the northeast at 5 to 15 gusting up to 20 miles per hour sunsets tonight close to 745 it's going to be a pretty pleasant evening with temperatures falling into the 80s as we take a look at highs today again even though the front is called a cool front cold front it's not going to make it feel cold outside it is just going to allow for some drier air to move in still going to be a warm day 94 in Seguin 94 in New Braunfels 93 in Divine 92 in Sabinal 93 in Floresville 95 in Gonzales in Kerrville, you may just be able to stay in the 80s today, 89 for the forecast high. As we take a look at the forecast over the next few days too, notice that rain is going to be uh, difficult to come by, but take a look at those mornings. On Tuesday morning, 70 degrees in San Antonio, both Monday and Tuesday morning, it's going to feel pretty crisp outside. 60s in the hill country, near 70 in San Antonio. As a runner, I'm getting excited for that crisp feeling. We're starting to see the seasons at least try to change. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 615. 74 degrees out. Still ahead as the world mourns the loss of Queen Elizabeth, the Netflix series, The Crown, one of my favorite shows, making some changes that could affect when the show's next season comes out. Plus, if you haven't gone back to the gym in a while, you are not alone. We're gonna take a look at what's keeping people from working out besides, obviously, more sleep. Or just being lazy like myself. All right, pick three, 819, Fireball Zero, Daily Four, Two seven eight five fireball zero. Cash five one four twenty three twenty seven thirty four Lotto Texas three five six fourteen twenty five forty. Did you play? I have not cashed in my two dollar winnings. Oh, yet. So I, was, I just what I usually do I cash in yeah. my winnings and get another ticket. You win a lot. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Big, big money. Big <laughs> winner over here. Powerball numbers thirty eight forty two fifty six sixty eight sixty nine. Powerball four. Power play two. Good luck. We'll be right back. New this morning, gym owners, they're still struggling to recover from the pandemic. In a new fitness consumer survey, 31% of gym goers are working out less this year. Oh, nearly 27% say they don't have plans to return to the gym. So this is good. It's a good distinction because we were talking about how a lot of people just maybe not going to the gym, but working out at home. So about right. half of those surveyed say they returned to the gym within nine months of restrictions being lifted from the pandemic. But those who didn't rejoin, 
Well, they're motivated by pricing promotion, safety concerns, and enhanced cleaning. Some other factors that customers are looking for are convenience, new member pricing, and the type of equipment offered. I just thought like people started enhancing their own quote unquote home gym, the Peloton. So we did. Yeah. yeah. All right, take a look at this video. An unexpected guest crashed a birthday party in Connecticut last weekend. So check this out. Look at your screen. A large black bear helping itself to some cupcakes. I don't blame him. <laughs> Laura Durst was having a party for her two-year-old son when the bear kind of just popped up behind a guest, sniffed her. Terrifying. Half of the adults grabbed the kids and took them into the garage. Some guests got into their car, honked their horns. Others continued yelling at the bear to scare it away. But... Mr. Bear, he was unfazed. It Going made it the cupcakes. Yeah, now. he's devouring those cupcakes. Uh, just made its way to the dessert table, snacking some more. Look at him just smack, smacking his lips there. Durst says they ended up waiting it out in the house. I'm glad no one was hurt. And this is like a, almost a children's book here. Yeah. It's a friendly, friendly bear. Friendly bear. I mean, it's going to take a sip of that juice box right there. Well, I'd Wash say those cupcakes down. At least it was a memorable birthday. Right. There you go. <laughs> Time now, 621, 74 degrees out. After the break, one of the most popular shows in recent memory is gearing up for a new season. We have the preview next in your morning spotlight. Welcome back in your morning spotlight. The Crown has stopped filming after the death of Queen Elizabeth. The director calls the Emmy-winning Netflix drama a love letter to the Queen and says filming will be stopped out of respect. So Claire Foy won three Emmys for her portrayal of the Queen. And Olivia Colman took over the role in seasons three and four, also winning an Emmy last year. So now Imelda Stoughton will sit atop the throne for seasons five and six. The sixth and final season is already planned and casting has started for some of the mon modern monarchs no word if netflix will move forward with the anticipated fall premiere of season five did you think your dad was the only mandalorian <sighs> i'm gonna let you read this because you actually watched the show okay so star wars fans get ready the trailer for the new season of the mandalorian has arrived the popular action series with the bounty hunter and lovable Baby Yoda wrapped up its second season in December of 2020. So in the finale, the title character and Grogu were separated, but spoiler alert, if you haven't seen season two, they were re re reunited in the spin-off series of the Book of Boba Fett. That's what I meant, the Book mm. of Boba Fett. Great show. So the new season starts streaming in 2023 on Disney+. Plus. Would you recommend? Yes. All right. Still headed 6.30, going backstage with the crew and cast of Mariachi Musical, what the director is saying about the new production. Plus, people are getting their gear ready to climb the Tower of the Americas in honor of 9-11. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you more about the event. Well, welcome back. Today is Sunday. It is September 11th, a day we will never forget, a dark day in American history. And we're going to be covering a lot of events, a lot of memorials going on in and around our community throughout the day. That's right. We were just talking about it. We all, every single one of us has a story. We know where we were. You know, we still remember exactly what happened. If we were in a classroom, if we were at work, turning on those TVs. Um, so our Camelia Wattis is going to be talking more about that. She is at the Tower Climb. But first, we're going to check in with Sarah Spivey. Sarah, you keep saying this buzzword, cool front. <laughs> It is a buzzword. Even somebody made a TikTok of it. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a cool front end name. You know, technically the meteorological term for it is a cold front, but we are not going to get cold from this front. Instead, though, it is going to become more comfortable. Lower humidity out there this afternoon and for the next couple of afternoons, too. As you take a look outside right now, it's 71 in Lotus. Good morning in Seguin. It's 72. 73 in Divine. 73 in Hondo. It's in the 60s in the Hill Country. It feels great in Bernie right now we're at 68 degrees, 67 in Kerrville, 69 in Bandera, 69 in Bulverde. Now we are actually seeing some isolated showers out there too, mainly west of San Antonio. Here's San Antonio. You can actually see the bats flying back into the Bracken Cave right up there on the northeast side of San Antonio. But near Castroville seeing a shower, near Hondo seeing a shower, and on the northeast side of Medina Lake seeing a shower there too. Looking at your 12-hour forecast, your KSAT 
12 hour forecast 20% chance for an isolated shower, especially west of San Antonio through the early morning hours. Then by about noon, it's going to become less humid and temperatures will climb into the low 90s this afternoon. 92 for the high temperature winds gusting from the north up to about 20 miles per hour. More on that front and how long that lower humidity will last coming up in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Right now, first responders getting ready to climb the stairs of the Tower of America's own an effort to pay tribute and remember the thousands who sacrificed their lives to save others on 9-11. It's already been 21 years since that happened. Our Camelia Wattis joins us live from the Tower. Camelia, what are you seeing? Well, Max, Sarah, I'm here. People are still checking in, but I'm here with Carlos Resendez. He's here. He's running the, or he's climbing it, climbing the Tower of the Americas for the first time. Um, tell me, what are you looking forward to when you get up there? Um, actually, I'm just looking forward to being over with. I've been like uh, training since July, so it's kind of one of those things like I want to, you know, kind of get get through it and kind of all that. I think the biggest thing I'm looking forward to is kind of like the experience of uh, hearing like every significant time frame. The firefighters are going to turn on their uh, responder clip or the the little like like what is it? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So when you you're in the tower, you kind of like listen to it. You kind of get the experience of like not the experience, but like an idea of what firefighters on 9/11 would have experienced. You know, hearing that as they were climb, trying to climb the towers as well. No, that's a, that's an interesting point that you bring up. And then I also want to know why why is it important that people climb this, and why is it important that you do it today? Uh, I think it's important because like. If you notice, like, you'll notice like, there's so many firefighters fully in gear. They were going about the time to uh, climb the Tower of Americas, and they're going to want to do it twice. And if they're willing to take the time out to train for this, to climb it, to remember their, their brothers, uh, at least we should be able to do something as well. So, Awesome, awesome. We love paying tribute to our first responders. Thank you again, and good luck on your climb. Um, reporting live from the Tower of the Americas, Camelia Juarez. Thank you, Kamalia. So in honor of the thousands of victims who lost their lives, Governor Greg Abbott issuing a statewide moment of silence. In a statement, he wrote in part, quote, as we take pause today to remember one of the darkest moments in our nation's history, let us also remember all of the courageous first responders who selflessly rushed in to help those in need, end quote. And the governor has also ordered Texas and U.S. flags to be lowered to half staff today. We have new details to a bizarre story out of New Braunfels. A home was left with a massive hole after a pickup truck smashed into it just last week. KSAT speaking with the homeowner who says she's thankful to be alive and thankful for security footage that captured the crash. The ring camera across the street capturing the moment a white Ford truck slammed into the side of the home. It left a huge hole behind, damaging the bathroom and the bedroom. Repairs now costing at least $16,000. This is the closet to the bedroom in the front and then the, as you can see, the baseboards were pushed out where the wall was hit. New Braunfels police are unable to identify the plates of the trucks right now, so they're calling on the community trying to catch the person behind the wheel. The truck you want to keep an eye out for, a white older Ford pickup truck resembling a late 1990s or early 2000s model with an extended cab. $187,000 is now the property of the Bear County Sheriff's Office after a drug bust at a West Side home. So 29 year old Ryan Harper facing several possession charges along with an unlawful carry of a weapon charge. He was arrested by deputies Thursday after they executed a warrant out of Arizona for money laundering. So on your screen now is a list of all the items found inside this home. Harper's bond for all charges combined $115 thousand dollars a murder mystery from last month now one step closer to being solved after the arrest of two suspects the bond now set at one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars each 22 year old gilbert torres and 20 year old stephanie zaragoza now they're being accused of shooting and killing mario alvarez now it all happened outside a home on morales street in broad daylight back on august 29th an arrest affidavit says Zaragoza allegedly lured the victim to a vehicle. Her boyfriend, Torres, he's accused of being in the backseat and firing his weapon at the victim. Now, witnesses told police they believe the suspects took off in a Jeep Cherokee. That same Jeep was seen on surveillance video at a nearby HEB. That's where the two suspects were shopping for groceries after the shooting. Zaragoza's mother called police, telling them her daughter went to the HEB the day of the murder with her boyfriend. 
Police able to track them down through the Jeep's license plate number, leading to their arrests. In the months following the Robb Elementary School shooting, the El Progreso Memorial Library has become a hub for community healing. The library, only a four-minute drive from Robb Elementary, has started a new chapter in its story in the months after the shooting. Saturday, kids painted rocks as part of our therapy. El Progreso has hosted superheroes, backpack drives, and grief counselors. When you walk into the library, you go through the tunnel of love, a place where you can see those works of art, cards, and a bench. All of it has been donated from people across the U.S. to show Uvalde their love. It truly has been an avalanche of love and outpouring and what it has told us is that no matter how evil, how, how much bad there can be in the world. Well, the library has received an outpouring of financial donations as well, so much so the children's section has been endowed permanently, allowing them to buy new books, toys, games, software, and pay for more kids' programs. Time now, 637, 74 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, one of San Antonio's greatest heroes, Manu. Going into the Basketball Hall of Fame, we'll tell you the story Manu Ginobili shared last night during his big ceremony. And after the break, going backstage with the cast and crew of a mariachi musical, what the director is saying about the new production. I was waiting for you to grito, Max. Mm, not today. Not today. <laughs> All right, 638, 74 degrees. Cool front. It's a word Sarah Spivey keeps saying. She'll explain what that means when we come back. Antonio, that's what you're going to feel when you see this new musical called American Mariachi that is about love and it's also about tradition and of course mariachi. But it's really the family theme of this play that screams San Antonio. A play about a daughter who is taking care of her mother who has early onset Alzheimer's. They're inspired to start their own mariachi band to help their mother reconnect with her memories. I mean, this city has mariachi at the heart with the Mariachi Vargas Extravaganza and conferences and so many wonderful mariachi bands and performances. It really feels like it belongs here. And on top of that, I had the opportunity to set the play in San Antonio. What excites me most about playing Lucha is the fact that um, it represents so many young Latina women. I myself am a professional mariachi musician and I have been performing for many years now since I was a young girl so it's something that I hold very dear to my heart that I'm able to step into this role and bring theater you know to my own experience as a mariachi musician myself. As soon as the show opens people I think people will get some like a, it's, it's almost like a magical experience, especially for our people who don't really get this in a normal theater setting. American Mariachi runs at the Public Theater of San Antonio through October 2nd. For more details, visit KSAT.com. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. Nice, it makes me want to dance. <laughs> Hey, we've got some showers out there this morning, guys, but they're mainly west of San Antonio. Let's take a look at the radar right now. You may see that little blip up there on the northeast side of town. Those are actually bats flying home into the Bracken Cave up there after a night of feasting on some bugs out there. Around San Antonio, though, again, it's fairly quiet. You have to go west to see any rain. Out near the Lake Hills area, you're about to get a good shower right now with some moderate rainfall, quick little downpour. They're moving to the south at about five miles per hour, southwest at about five miles per hour, so pretty slow. Between DeHennis and Hondo, right along 90, that's where we've got a shower, too. And then take a look at this. Through uh, Lytle and down to Divine, this shower is just falling apart over Natalia. I want to see how much rain fell there in just uh, the last about hour or so. Uh, let's take a look at that. Again, not a ton of rainfall with these uh, in some spots, though, up to about a quarter to half an inch of rain falling with these isolated, very isolated showers and storms. So let's go back to the radar and zoom out a little bit. Again, 
Most of this is to the west of San Antonio, but we will still carry about a 20% chance for an isolated shower through the morning. Here's a look at that rain timeline for you through about 10, 11 o'clock. That's when we'll have a 20% chance for some showers and storms. Uh, but into the afternoon, that rain chance really goes down because we're actually going to get a cool front moving through today. And the biggest impact from that front is not going to be a drop in temperatures. Rather, it's going to be a drop in the humidity. 76 degrees outside right now. Dew points are near 70. So so it is just a touch muggy out there, but definitely not as humid as it has been the last couple of mornings. It's 69 in the Valley, 68 in Rock Springs. Feels pretty nice in Kerrville this morning. We're at 68 degrees, 71 in New Braunfels. Good morning in Gonzales. It's 72, 71 in Pleasanton and 71 in Del Rio. A wider view here across the state of Texas. As you can see, there are some showers. The front, which we can draw on here, is working its way through Texarkana, the Hill Country and West Texas right now. You can see how winds are from the north behind that front there and take a look at temperatures up across the Rockies. It's 47 in Denver. 40 in North Platte and 39 in Casper, Wyoming. Even across the state of Texas, we've got about a 20 degree temperature spread. Now we're not going to see temperatures in the 50s. It's even going to be difficult for us to see temperatures in the 60s, but we are going to see some much drier air moving in place behind this front. Let me take you through the future cast where we're looking at dew points here. So that front is going to move through in the next couple of hours and it's going to drop the humidity as winds turn to the north so that this afternoon our dew points will only be in the 50s. That is pretty pleasant around San Antonio. Even though it's going to be warm, the low humidity is going to feel nice. Even into tomorrow afternoon, dew points will still only be in the 50s as that front falls apart. But then by late Tuesday, we'll see Gulf moisture return and we'll be back to a bit of a muggy weather pattern. So looking at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, just to recap everything I just said, 20% chance for isolated rain early this morning. We'll be seeing temperatures warm into the 80s. It's going to be partly cloudy and in the afternoon, we'll We'll have less humidity. Only a stray shower is possible. 10% chance. We're not banking on the rain today. We're banking on the low humidity and breezy conditions this afternoon. 92 for the high in San Antonio. Northeast winds at about 10 miles per hour in the afternoon. We could even see some gusts up to about 20 miles per hour. So it will be a bit breezy. Here's a look at high temperatures today. 94 in New Braunfels, 94 in Seguin, 92 Poteet, 93 in Floresville, 93 in Nixon Smiley, 92 in San Antonio, 92 in Hondo, 95 in Gonzales and close to 90 degrees up in the hill country. So yeah, it's still going to be warm, but at least the humidity will be lower both today, uh, Monday afternoon and Tuesday afternoon. One thing I want to say is take a look at the morning temperatures, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We might actually feel pretty crisp in the morning, near 70 degrees around San Antonio with morning lows in the 60s in the hill country. In this uh, amateur runner's opinion, that's pretty nice running weather. <laughs> You didn't have to say amateur. Sarah. I am though. <laughs> like I, I don't want people to get the idea that I'm like a marathon runner or anything. <laughs> I just want to know what constitutes amateur. Like, what are we talking? Two miles? Three miles? My pace is like eleven. Okay. Minutes. Okay. It's That's not fair. great, but it's like fine. Time now, six forty-seven, seventy-four degrees out. All right, just ahead on GMSA. Oh, what a day yesterday for football. I'm sorry to Texas fans and Aggie fans, oh, no. but UTSA came out with a win, a thriller, overtime. Oh my goodness, we're gonna tell you all about it in just a bit. How much football did you watch yesterday? Too much. <laughs> I'm sure. All right, taking a look outside with the roads. We know a lot going on, a lot of traffic possibly in the downtown area for people heading out to that tower climb this morning. But right now, we don't really see any other incidents on the roads. If we do, we'll let you know about them. Let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Your pick three, 819, Fireball Zero. Daily four, 2785, Fireball Zero. Cash five, one, four, 23, 27, 34. Texas Lotto, three, five, six, 14, 25, 40. Powerball 38, 42, 56, 68, 69, power, Powerball 4, Power Play 2. Manu! Sorry, I had to get it in. All right, we know who he is. He's a four time NBA champion, Olympic gold medalist, and now in the Hall of Fame basketball player. All right, so he was officially enshrined in the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. So for Spurs, keeping score at home, two of the big three now in the Hall of Fame. Tony Parker still has a year to go until he's eligible. Manu getting the loudest cheers of the night. 
Saturday night, Springfield, Massachusetts, during the speech, Manu telling the story about the Spurs drafting him in 1999 with the 57th overall pick. I thought it was a mistake, that it was a you know, language thing, that they thought, you know, I had zero expectations, zero. Uh, I never had a conversation with the Spurs. My agent never told me that I could have been drafted. Uh, I had no, no fancy suit, no hat, no press conference, no nothing. I got no clue that it was happening. I didn't even know what San Antonio was in the world. Uh, zero. So much. <laughs> so now Manu calling San Antonio home. Greg Simmons catching up with him just minutes after the ceremony ended, and we've got that interview posted at ksat.com. Love you, Manu. All right, it took a little extra time, but UTSA is in the win column on their young season after winning on the road against West Point. So quarterback Frank Harris led the charge after the Roadrunners fell behind by two touchdowns in the second half. UTSA kicker Jarrett Sackett missed a 41-yard field goal for the win, forcing overtime. Army got three points on its first possession, giving the Roadrunners a chance to win with a touchdown. Harris throws it to JT Clark, and that's the game winner. UTSA, they win 41-38 after playing back-to-back -back OT games for the first time in school history. Harris passed for 359 yards and three touchdowns. Go Road, road Runners. Yeah, so uh, we're obviously going to talk about the UT game and Texas A&M later in the day. But this is our San Antonio this team. Is it. Yes. And they got the win. One. One. Win number one. <laughs> 654, 74 degrees out. Here's what's coming up on Good Morning America. And coming up on GMA, we're paying our respects this morning to the late Queen Elizabeth II. Our Amy Robach will be joining us live from Edinburgh in Scotland as we and the world witness the historic changes of this moment in the legacy of the British monarchy, starting with the proclamation of King Charles III at St. James Palace just two days following the death of his mother. His pledge to serve his country as Britain observes a 10-day mourning period and prepares for the Queen's funeral. What to expect coming up. Plus, more on Queen Elizabeth's legacy as we look back on her extraordinary life, her significant impact on the monarchy and America from the Commonwealth to the White House, and more on the Queen's cultural impact on society and how the Emmy-winning series The Crown is honoring her before their fifth season, what the series creator had to say as so many mourn and celebrate her life. That's all ahead here on GMA. First responders and athletes are now preparing to three, two, one, three, two, one. KSAC community is getting ready for what has become a yearly tradition here. Registration is open for the ninth annual Head for the Cure. The 5K run and walk raises awareness and funds to fight brain cancer. So KSAT's former news director Jim Boyle, diagnosed with brain cancer, passed away, but his legacy lives on. His daughter helping kick off this event outside the KSAT studios back in 2014. And since then, while well, it has grown with more and more families running for survivors and running in remembrance of their loved ones. So this year it all kicks off on September 24th. You can register right now on KSAT.com. Use this promo code on your screen. The word is KSAT for $5 discount. We've got some isolated showers out there, especially near Medina Lake and southwest of Hondo right now. Just some quick downpours through the area, and as you can see, most of that is to the west of San Antonio. Still, though, we're going to carry about a 20% chance to see some isolated rain around the San Antonio metro area, especially this morning. Otherwise, it's going to be partly cloudy and warming up pretty quickly. We'll be at 86 at noon, 92 for the high temperature. A cool front is going to move through today, but it is going to make it feel less humid in the afternoon. So that is some good news. That 92, it's going to feel okay outside and a bit breezy. Northeast winds at 5 to 15, gusting up to 20 miles per hour. It's going to be a pleasant night too. Mornings will be nice and crisp over the next couple of mornings with that low humidity. Monday morning and Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning will be near 70 degrees. But all in all, it is going to be a quiet and fairly warm week. Only an isolated shower or storm is possible by the end of the week. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for watching. We're going to take an hour-long break for Good Morning America. We'll be back here at 8 a.m. See you at 8.
12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hundreds of first responders are here inside the Tower of the Americas, climbing to remember the people that sacrificed their lives nearly 21 years ago. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you why they climb. All right, and taking a live look at New York City, we know that the memorial and this morning's speaking and bell ringing has just begun. We had a moment of silence at 7.46 a.m. remembering all of those who were killed 21 years ago and remembering all those who rushed towards the chaos, sacrificing themselves to save others. I believe this is the, that was the part where they're they go through all the names. All the families' all, all names. The families go up there. Such an important moment for those families. I know it's been 21 years since 9-11, but still so real for those families. And many of us, I mean, we were talking about it this morning. We all remember where we were watching on our TVs, watching it li happen live when 9-11 happened. And it's still haunting. You know, if you scroll through social media, you see some of the replayed footage of when the first plane crashed. It's gut-wrenching. It's really hard to watch. It really is. All right, well, good morning. Thank you for starting your Sunday with us. Obviously, we're going to have full 9-11 coverage throughout the morning, checking in with Camellia at the Tower of America. So through that climb, a very powerful climb, first responders in and around San Antonio doing what they can to remember all of their fallen brothers and sisters in arms. But for now, we're going to check in with Sarah Spivey. Sarah, how's the weather look today? Hey, good morning, guys. We're going to get a cool front moving through today, not necessarily keeping it chilly outside. In fact, it's going to still be warm this afternoon, but we will have lower humidity. So that is a nice welcome change. Take a look outside right now. Plenty of blue skies out at the airport. Here's a look at some of the local temperatures in San Antonio at the airport at 74 degrees, 76 at Stinson, 75 at Kelly and 73 at JBSA Randolph. Generally, winds are calmer from the west at about five miles per hour. It feels pretty good in the hill country. Good morning. If you're waking up to us in the hill country at 66 in Bernie, 68 in Bandera, 66 in Kerrville and 68 in Comfort. Otherwise, temperatures are in the low to mid 70s early this morning. It is a bit muggy out there, but again, that is going to change as we see the front move through a little bit later on this morning. There are also a couple of very isolated showers, one in northern Kendall County, one right over Medina Lake, pushing toward Hondo and on the southwestern uh, corner of Medina County there. Most of this rain is west of San Antonio but we'll still carry about a 20% chance for some isolated showers through the morning hours. Uh, again, a morning shower is possible this uh, morning. and the afternoon, that cool front will drop the humidity. It'll still be warm, but it'll be breezy with lower humidity. And this week, we'll have nice mornings and warm afternoons. Details on how cool it'll get in the morning hours coming up in just a bit. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. This morning, we're remembering all the lives lost on September 11th, 2001. It's a total of 2,996 people that were killed. Citizens of 78 countries died in New York, Washington, D.C., and Pennsylvania. At the World Trade Center, 2,763 2 people died after those two planes slammed into the Twin Towers. That includes 343 firefighters and paramedics, 23 New York City police officers, and 37 port authority police officers and here in san antonio the alamo city honoring the heroes who died on 9 11 by climbing the tower of americas twice this is one of the largest 9 11 memorial climbs in the country and the world there are around 100 agencies participating this morning with over 500 first responders first res first responders of hundreds of military members as well as civilians also taking part camelia juarez is there live been there live throughout the morning so camelia What's it like out there? Max, Max, Sarah, we're here, and the ceremony has just now kicked off. Everybody's, uh, we hear the national anthem right now behind us. Okay, so right now with me, we have one of the firefighters that's climbing in today's climb. His name is Aaron Kagan. It's your fifth year running. So tell us, why are you out here today? Uh, this is a very important day. You know, we, uh, we have to recognize 9-11 as a day that, the, you know, all the firefighters and all the people that died, you know, they weren't able to finish the climb that they needed to finish. So that's what we're all here to do. Tell me what, uh, tell me what you remember from that day. Uh, I, I grew up in New York City. I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I was actually in first grade at the time. Um, all I really remember is that I was in school and we, uh, we went out for a break and there were just burnt papers raining down 
uh, all over and smoke. That's that's basically it. And so what does today mean for you? Uh, being from New York City, today is very important for me. Uh, it really hits close to home to be able to be here and to be able to honor the all the firemen that died. Uh, it truly is an honor to be able to do that. It's really important to me. What does it mean to see all these people? I mean, there's hundreds of people out here today. It's really a beautiful thing to see that all these people come out to to share the honor and to share the, 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 the strength and the courage that that all the firefighters and police officers that passed away had uh, to be able to climb it and to finish what they did not start is truly an honor to see. It's a beautiful thing. And so you're in your gear. Why is it important for you to do the full gear run the way that they did? Well, when they were climbing the Twin Towers, they were in gear. You know, they were going to work and they were doing everything, you know, to to the maximum of their abilities. So that's what we want to do. And what do you want families to know that are watching? I'd like families to know how important this day is uh, to, you know, to honor it and to learn about it and to, you know, teach their loved ones, teach their kids about how important this day is because it truly is a very important day in history. Yes, we definitely don't want to forget. We want to remember. And so what you're looking at, what you just were looking at, was an actual piece from the Twin Towers in New York City that's here. And it'll be um, as people come in to climb the stairs behind me. Now, we're going to bring you the latest. It's supposed to start about at 845, and they're going to come all the way through here, and they're going to climb up, and we'll bring you that um, when that happens around 845. Back to you, Max and Sarah. Thank you, Camelia. New this morning, San Antonio police say they have no suspects in an overnight shooting on the city's southeast side. A man in his 30s was shot in front of his home on Owasa Street just before 1230 this morning. The man was taken to University Hospital with a gunshot wound to the leg. He's expected to be okay. Police found two shell casings at the scene, but will interview the victim at the hospital for more information. There's a lot of talk recently about the economy, interest rates, and jobs, but what impact are we seeing here locally, here in our community? That's why joining us in today's leading essay segment is Adrian Lopez, CEO of Workforce Solutions Alamo. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for taking time to join us this morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Mr. Lopez, industries in and around San Antonio still recovering from the pandemic, all the closures. So what is our local employment numbers? What do they look like? And what industries are still looking to fill the most positions? Yeah, so good news is today we're at approximately 4% uh, unemployment. Um, Pre-pandemic, that was about 3.5%. We're seeing a lot of growth in all of the major industries that we actually uh, support. Um, If you look at Texas, um, we're on par with what's happening in terms of the unemployment level with Texas. Um, From approximately May of 2021 to May of 2022, Texas added about 750,000 jobs. Uh, Locally here, we probably added about 50 plus thousand jobs. Um, And there's a lot of sort of really great gains um, in all of the sectors that we're supporting. The country, there are reports that there are more openings than people looking for work. So is that the case here in San Antonio? Yeah, one of the things that, you know, that, that's happening is that, yeah, there's definitely a, a lot of great uh, job growth that's happening in this region. Um, you know, there are more than, than enough folks to be able to, you know, fill those positions. It's really an issue about a, a skills gap. Um, and really, you know, when you look at, uh, let's say, parts of the Midwest where they have less than uh, one person, one to one replacement person. So if somebody is retiring from a position, there's less than one person to fill that position. In this region, we actually have a one to five uh, ratio, which uh, means that for somebody retiring, there's actually five people available to fill those positions. But again, it's really about a skills gap. Um, and really the, 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 the thing about Uh, participation in terms of the labor force. We've seen an increase in the labor force as well as an increase in, um, you know, people working. San Antonio, one of the cities around the country that we've really benefited a lot from more and more businesses coming to our area. What has that meant on the jobs front? It's meant a couple of uh, things. Uh, One is that uh, definitely we are benefiting from uh, companies that are relocating from other parts of the country. And for that matter, even offshore, Uh, I think in Texas over the last year, we had about 70 uh, major corporations that uh, were relocated to Texas. 
Um, for this area, we continue to see, you know, really uh, exp- not only new businesses, but expansion of existing businesses. You know, some of the existing employers are securing major contracts, uh, such as like Boeing, right, um, you know, that's located at Port San Antonio. They're creating, you know, a few thousand jobs within the next uh, 12 to 18 months. And those are really good paying, you know, high wage jobs. Okay, you guys have the Red, White, and You hiring event that's coming up. So what should families in, in and around our area know about this event? Yeah, thank you for that. You know, this is our largest hiring event throughout the year that's focused uh, on veterans. Um, this will be our 11th annual hiring Red, White, and You, which will be hosted Thursday, November 10th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Freeman Coliseum. The first hour is actually dedicated uh, just solely for our veterans. Uh, but beyond that point, um, it is open to, you know, the veterans family members as well as the general public. Uh, for those folks that, um, you know, need some assistance with either updating their resume uh, resume and or getting, you know, interview assistance, uh, we would encourage them to visit one of our 16 career centers located throughout the region. Um, we should have approximately about 200 plus employers uh, on site. So really a lot of great um, job opportunities that will exist. Uh, and so for those that need more information, we would encourage them to contact us at WorkforceSolutionsAlamo.org or to call our helpline at 210-224-4357. All right, last question for you, Mr. Lopez. You guys just had a new big partnership with the San Antonio Food Bank. Tell us about it and why you partnered with the food bank. You know, this is a, a signature of who we are with Workforce Solutions Alamo. We're not satisfied with just the 16 career centers that, that we have throughout the region, you know, because those are those obviously our doors are open for anybody to come. But we want to go where people are at. And when we see the numbers of thousands of people who are lined up uh, to seek out food assistance and are in their most uh, vulnerable time, that's where we want to be. And that's what this partnership actually uh, represents, the power of partnership between uh, Workforce Solutions Alamo and the San Antonio Food Bank. So we have a satellite office that now is operating there. So as people are receiving uh, food uh, and signing up for benefits, they also have an opportunity to actually uh, receive services from Workforce Solutions Alamo. All right, Mr. Adrian Lopez, CEO of Workforce Solutions Alamo, thank you so much for taking your time joining us this morning. And for our viewers, if you want to watch this interview full or find more information about that event, just head to ksat.com later this morning as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Time now, 812, 74 degrees out. Coming up, how a library in Uvalde is giving hope to those in the community and bringing them together. Let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. 74 degrees now. It's pretty out there. What is the rest of the day? What does the work week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Welcome back. In the months following the Robb Elementary School shooting, the El Progreso Memorial Library has become a hub for community healing. Now, the library, only a four minute drive from Robb Elementary, started a new chapter in its story in the months after the shooting. Just yesterday, kids painting rocks as part of art therapy. El Progreso has hosted superheroes, backpack drives, and even grief counselors. You walk, when you walk into the library, you go through a tunnel of love, a place where you can see works of art, cards, and even a bench. All of it donated from people around the country showing Uvalde love. It truly has been an avalanche of love and outpouring and what it has told us is that no matter how evil, how, how much bad there can be in the world. The library has received an outpouring of financial donations as well, so much so that the children's section has been endowed permanently, allowing them to buy new books, toys, games, software, and even pay for kids programming. Well, time now, 817, 74 degrees out. Did you make it outside yesterday? I did, but um, I, was, I was like, oh, what if I go into the shade in the afternoon? No, oh Sarah, the humidity, I went on this hike. It was, it was awful. Yeah. It was, I was like, I should have listened to Sarah Spivey, right? <laughs> 
why didn't you? No, I don't just know. Kidding. I'm just I don't kidding. know. Uh, but I'm yeah, ashamed. <laughs> the humidity was really bad yesterday in the afternoon. There's some good news though. A weak cool front is going to move through and it's going to knock the humidity down this afternoon. So even though it's going to be warm in the low 90s, the humidity will be low. Now early this morning, we do have some showers out there, especially across parts of the hill country and out to the west. Let's zoom in on this one shower that is in Kendall County. It's the northwest of Candelia, the north east of Sisterdale. A lot of ranch lands out there, not too many uh, roads and thoroughfares, but across areas closer to Medina Lake, that's where we're seeing some of these showers too. It's been raining on and off through Medina Lake and Lake Hills area for throughout the morning. So nice little light rain shower out there. And there's one pushing uh, to the southwest toward Hondo right now and in between Hondo and Dehennis along Highway 90. That's where most of the rain has been this morning. Again, it is uh, fairly quiet around San Antonio. I'll zoom out even more and put this in motion and you can see just how isolated these showers are. So we will carry a 20% chance for an isolated shower through about 10, 11 o'clock this morning. Otherwise, it's going to be a pretty quiet day for us. Once that front moves through, it'll dry out and it'll be pretty warm, but with low humidity. And that's a nice welcome change. Outside right now, we've got 74 degrees. Dew points are right near 70. And we've got winds from the west northwest at about 5 miles per hour. Good morning in Kerrville. It's only 67 degrees in Kerrville this morning. Only 70 in Yavali, 74 in Del Rio, 66 in Rock Springs, 72 in New Braunfels, and 72 in Gonzales. Let's zoom out and take a look at the big picture here. We've got a couple of areas of showers across the panhandle in southwest of San Angelo. There's the front. This is a very weak front. Uh, it is looking at a 20 degree difference across the state of Texas from Lubbock to San Antonio. Temperatures though, the much cooler air, air is well to the north across parts of the Rockies. So we're not going to see a big temperature drop from this, but our big weather change is going to be that it's going to be much drier, lower humidity once this front moves through. Take a look at dew points into this afternoon. Dew points will only be in the 50s, which is pretty pleasant. That is very nice to see dew points in the 50s during the afternoon hours. And then even tomorrow, dew points will be in the 50s in the afternoon as well. By about Tuesday, late Tuesday, we start to see Gulf moisture return and we'll be back to the typical uh, September mugginess that we see out there this time of year. So your KSAT 12 hour forecast calls for a 20% chance for rain through about 11 o'clock and then into the afternoon our rain chances go away and it will become less humid once that front moves through. Winds are going to pick up too. We'll see winds from the northeast at about 10 miles per hour gusting up to perhaps about uh, 20 miles per hour occasionally and the key here is even though it's going to be warm low 90s there will be low humidity it'll be 91 in del rio 95 in catula 95 in gonzalez 89 in kerrville pretty nice up in kerrville today and a look closer around the san antonio metro area 93 in castroville 92 in canyon lake 90 in bulverde and bernie 90 in comfort 93 in floresville and 95 in gonzalez less afternoon humidity over the next couple of days and take a look at those mornings this is the part that i think if you're an early riser you're really going to be rewarded temperatures will be near 70 degrees Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday morning in the hill country in the 60s. We're starting to see that subtle shift to fall. Max and Sarah. All thank right. you, Sarah. Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 821, 74 degrees out. Manu, 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 Manu. Manu, Manu. <laughs> Go ahead, Max. So if you haven't heard, Manu. <laughs> Obviously, one of San Antonio's favorite Spurs. He is in the Basketball Hall of Fame. We're going to tell you about it in just a bit. All right, San Antonio, we know him. He's our four-time NBA champion, Olympic gold medalist, and now a Hall of Fame basketball player. San Antonio Spurs great. Manu Ginobili, now officially part of the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. So upon learning the news in April, Manu said the odds of a kid from Argentina making the Hall, winning four NBA titles and an Olympic gold, very, very slim. He's as humble as he is great on the court. Manu got the loudest cheers of the night Saturday last night in Springfield, Massachusetts. So during his speech, Manu told the story about the Spurs drafting him in 1999 with the 57th overall pick. Yes, I know. Uh, it's, it's strange. I never lived for individual accomplishments, as I said before. I, but I love having some of my former teammates, coaches, uh, Argentinian teammates, uh, because again, it's it's, it's a recognition to 
to those two teams especially to celebrate them and the thing I always cared the most about was about the teams so I, I'm very glad to be here and, uh, and celebrating with them. So Manu calls San Antonio home. He even caught up with our own Greg Simmons just minutes after the Hall of Fame ceremony ended. We have that interview posted online right now. Just head to ksat.com. So what is your favorite Manu moment while we have him up? I think it was the 2019 block during James the Harden. Yes. Yes, iconic. Oh my gosh. Thank you for that, Manu. Yeah. Time now, 826, 79 degrees out. All right, we are going, are we, do we have a live picture uh, from the Tower Americas? All right, well, coming up, um, Camellia is going to be live again at the Tower of Americas. This is the largest 9-11 memorial climbs in the country. We'll bring you that live shot in just a bit. Welcome back. We're going to take a live look at New York City this morning. Now, we've been hearing from families who have lost loved ones 21 years ago at 9-11. Throughout the morning, they've been saying their family's members' names. Such a powerful morning there in New York. And just, we've been talking about it throughout the morning. This is Ground Zero. We talked about what we remember 21 years ago today, how we can never forget, and how we continue to remember not only those who were killed in the senseless attack, but all the heroes who rushed towards the chaos and save those lives, sacrificing themselves. And here in San Antonio, we honor them in a very special way. That's right, we are just a few minutes away from one of the largest tower climbs in the nation, getting underway here in San Antonio in just a bit. Camelia Juarez, live at the Tower of America. So, Camelia, what is the mood like before everything starts? Well, Max, Max, Sarah, it's an extremely somber mood out here. Everybody is very calm. We just had a moment of silence for uh, the fall in line of duty. But right now, they're, everybody's getting ready to make this climb. You can see that everybody's taking their place. It's starting to get a little bit more quiet right before. And they're going to, right now, they're all set up before the um, piece that fell from the World Trade Center back in New York. And you can see this group in front of me, these firefighters, they're from Corpus and they're the first that are going to go inside. And we just spoke with um, one of the firefighters not too long ago and she was telling me that this, when she climbs this, she's, she's going to be thinking about those first responders who went in, who went in without thinking twice, that they just did what they had to do. And so she wants to reflect on that and why she comes out here every day. Later on today, we'll hear from her in an interview but for now they're going to play some of the recording they're going to play some of the recording from 9-11 on that day and we'll also have that recording for you later in the show but for now we'll let you go um, as they're about to about to start in just a just a few minutes back to you Max and Sarah thank you Camelia in honor of the thousands of victims who lost their lives 21 years ago, Governor Greg Abbott issuing a statewide moment of silence. That's right, in a statement he wrote in part, quote, as we take pause today to remember one of the darkest moments in our nation's history, let us also remember all of the courageous first responders who selflessly rushed in to help those in need, end quote. The governor has also ordered Texas and the U.S. flags to be lowered to half staff today. And that moment of silence at 746 earlier this morning. Time now, 8.33, 75 degrees out. So Sarah Spivey, what is the rest of the day? What does the work week look like? Yeah, guys, you know, it is still going to be a warm day today, all right? But it is not going to feel as bad outside because the humidity will be lower after a front moves through later on today. Honestly, outside right now, not too bad either. 74 degrees in San Antonio, but you look up in the hill country, my goodness, it's 67 in Kerrville, 68 in Comfort, 68 in Bandera. Feels really nice up there. Uh, and there are even some isolated showers. Take a look at the radar right now. There's an isolated shower that's moving to the southwest. Bernie, you could be seeing this isolated shower if it holds on in the next 30 minutes or so. Down in Medina County, between Hondo and Medina Lake, we're seeing some isolated rain as well. Now today, this morning, only 20% chance for an isolated shower. You could see on the radar just how isolated that rain is. It's still going to be a warm day, 92 for the high, but look at the wind direction from the northeast gusting up to 20 miles per hour. A cool front is going to move through, lowering that humidity and making it feel pretty pleasant this afternoon and later on tonight. How long will that nice feeling last? I've got that answer coming up in just a bit. Sarah and Max.
Thank you, Sarah. $187,000, now the property of the Bear County Sheriff's Office after a drug bust at a Westside home. 29-year-old Ryan Harper facing several possession charges along with an unlawful carry of a weapon charge. He was arrested by deputies on Thursday after they executed a warrant out of Arizona for money laundering. So just take a look at your screen. The bond for all charges combined for all of these things that they found in his possession is $115,000. A murder mystery from last month is now one step closer to being solved after the arrest of two murder suspects, 22-year-old Gil Gilbert Torres and 20-year-old Stephanie Zaragoza are accused in the shooting death of Mario Alvarez. The shooting happened outside a home on Morales Street in broad daylight back on August 29th. And according to the arrest affidavit, Zaragoza allegedly lured the victim to the vehicle. Her boyfriend, Torres, is accused of being in the back seat and firing at the victim. Witnesses told police they believe the suspects took off in a Jeep Cherokee. The same vehicle was seen on surveillance video at a nearby HEB where two suspects were seen shopping for groceries after the shooting occurred. Zaragoza's mother called police and told them her daughter went to HEB the day of the murder with her boyfriend. Police were able to track down the sus suspect through the Jeep's license plate. And the San Antonio community is in need of blood as that inventory is low. There is a blood drive today at the Santicos Palladium Theater that is on the 17,000 block of West Interstate on of West I-10 and of the frontage road. As of now, San Antonio has two a two-day blood supply. Type O blood supply is at a day and a half left short of the seven days needed. Donations can be scheduled by visiting the South Texas Blood website, southtexasblood.org, and walk-in appointments, of course, are accepted. Pro football coverage. Power Today is the day so many football fans have been waiting for. It is time to talk NFL action here in Texas, starting off chronologically. The Texans taking on the Colts at home at NRG Stadium. Kickoff set for noon. And of course, how about them Cowboys? Sunday Night Football, Cowboys back in action tonight. Primetime action, taking on Tom Brady, Chris Godwin, and the rest of the Bucks in Dallas. Kickoff set for 7:20. Oh my goodness, and talking about football. If you watched football yesterday, well, you should, you know, probably check your heart rate at this point. Number one, Alabama, a three touchdown favorite in Austin at Texas. And due to many factors, the Crimson Tide, well, lucky to walk away with a win. Second quarter, Texas down 10-3. Quarterback Quinn Hewers takes a hard hit to the ground. Bama linebacker Dallas Turner lands on him. So Quinn stayed down for a bit. He walked off. We learned a clavicle sprain is left non-throwing shoulder. He's going to need an MRI. Backup Hudson Card did a nice job playing on a bad ankle. He was limping significantly. On top of that, the Horns missed a 20-yard field goal. Had a safety taken away from the refs. Plus, the Horns, well, did pretty much everything they could to contain the Bama quarterback Bryce Young. Heisman winner Bryce Young until big play. Ryan Watts splitsed, missed the young, uh, ducked away, 20-yard gain, four plays later, good from 33 yards. And number one Alabama surviving, beating Texas 20-19. to 19. And if you thought Longhorn fans had a bad day, I just tell your Aggie friends, sorry. <laughs> Number six, Texas A&M hosting Appalachian State. Looked good on paper, but it turned out to be a nightmare. That face oh, says it that all. that face was great. App State had 22 first downs to nine for the Aggies, out gaining A&M 314 yards to 186, down 14-7 in the third. Devin A-Chain taking it 95 yards, tying the game 14 all. Aggies are pumped, but App State responded. 18 play drive, eight up nine minutes and 15 seconds on the clock. I was streaming the game at this point, and it felt like the Aggies hadn't touched the ball in a minute. Sarah Spivey. Max, just one word. Mm. Pain. Pain. I was texting oh, Sarah man. during the game. <laughs> Justin Horn and Mia and I were, were texting, and we just, you know. Oh my gosh, we have three meteorologists who are Aggies. So, so here's the meteorology the, program. It's a great the meteorology jarring program. Jarring part. Football Appalachian program. State. Oh. oh so bad. Appalachian State paid 1.5 million dollars to know. play A&M. I know. Worth it? Uh, if you're <laughs> Appalachian State, I'd say so. So they get one and a half million dollars, and they get a win. 
Hey, all I got to say is a big old gigum, and gig I hope we can do better next week. All, all right. right. Look at that optimism. <laughs> Time now, 839, 78 degrees out. All right, coming up, three San Antonio locations received high scores but had some serious health concerns. We go behind the kitchen door. Now let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. Like you said, less calm, quiet out there now. What is the rest of the day? What does the week look like? We're going to check in with our local Aggie, Sarah Spivey, in just a bit. Hey, great meteorology department. <laughs> well, welcome back. Taking a live look at the Tower of Americas, a special event happening today in honor of the first responders who sacrificed their lives 21 years ago. So right now you're looking at first responders from across the state, across the country. They're joined by civilians paying tribute to first responders killed at the World Trade Towers on September 11th, 2001. Now this is one of the largest 9-11 memorial climbs in the country and around the world. Uh, like Max was saying, there are around 100 agencies participating, over 500 responders and hundreds of military members that are gonna be taking uh, part in this climb. They're gonna climb the Tower of Americas twice in honor of the nearly 3,000 people that lost their lives, over 300 first responders that knowingly went into the Twin Towers and sacrificed their lives uh, trying to save those people uh, back when 9-11 happened 21 years ago. I think it's going to kick off any minute now, 845, mm -hmm. is that what uh, Camelia said earlier? Um, but just keep with us on air and online. We'll bring you that coverage throughout the morning. All right, a convenience store with a rodent problem, a Mexican restaurant where employees weren't washing their hands, and a popular fried chicken chain in the need of cleaning. All three locations scored in the 80s, but some had some serious health issues. Express Mart number two, located in the 1900 block of Southwest 19th Street, got an 80 on their recent health inspection. The ice machine had a black mold-like debris buildup. There was no hand washing sink because it had been removed. The inspector told the establishment to immediately stop selling pickles and bagging ice on site until the sink was reinstalled. Another sink had dark mold-like debris and several flies buzzing around it. Rodent droppings were observed inside a walk-in cooler. The inspector ordered the business to clean up the droppings, remove damaged bags, and provide access to a locked back room. A reinspection was ordered. Aradero, a Mexican restaurant in the 5800 block of South Flores, earned an 82. The inspector didn't see any employees there wash their hands during the inspection. One employee was observed grabbing cooked bacon and placing it on a plate without washing hands or using gloves. A metal rack used to store clean plates was soiled with dust and rust. Seven violations were corrected during the inspection, but a reinspection was still ordered because several certifications needed to be obtained or renewed. The church's fried chicken at the corner of Culebra and Galm earned an 84. Packages of raw chicken were being improperly thawed in a standing bin of water. The inspector watched an employee change tasks, remove dirty gloves, and put on clean gloves without washing their hands. Vent filters over the fryers were coated with excessive accumulations of grease and food debris. Employees had no idea when those filters were last changed. There was also a lot of trash and food debris throughout the business that needed to be cleaned up. A reinspection was ordered. That's what's behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. All right, well, taking a look. Okay, we're going to hopefully take a live bump out at the Tower of Americas in honor of the 21st year after 9-11. We're going to hopefully get the start of the climb of the Tower of Americas, again, honoring the thousands of lives lost 21 years ago. But for now, we're going to take a look at Sarah Spivey. So, Sarah, 847, already 76 degrees out there. How hot's going to get today? Well, we are going to get into the low 90s, okay? But it's not all bad news because we are going to have lower humidity this afternoon than the last couple of afternoons. And the reason for that is a weak 
cool front is going to move through. Outside right now, San Antonio, it's pretty dry, but we do have some isolated showers out there right now. I want to go ahead and zoom into uh, the shower that's occurring in Kendall County. You can see that it's approaching that I-10 corridor right near Bernie. Now these are moving pretty slowly and they're kind of falling apart as they move to the south. But if this were to hold on together, it could make it to Bernie and the Bernie High School area by about 920 this morning. So within the next about uh, 30 minutes or so. Elsewhere, we've got some showers that are occurring in Medina County. It's been raining on and off pretty steadily over Medina Lake throughout this morning. And near Hondo, you can see that there's a shower pushing to the south and to the southwest about to cross over that uh, Highway 90 corridor. But as I push play on this, you can see again, very isolated and it's dry around San Antonio. We could still see one or two isolated showers around San Antonio early this morning, but by the afternoon, our rain chance is pretty much going to be done uh, for the day as that front moves through and brings in some drier air. It looks great outside. This is a look at the rate at the uh, view right over the airport, and you can see a few cumulus clouds there at 74 degrees. Winds are from the west northwest, uh, pretty slow at about five miles per hour. And take a look at temperatures around the metro area and around the KSAT 12 viewing area. It's still in the 60s up in the hill country. We've got a mix of sun and clouds where we are seeing those showers across parts of Kendall and Medina County. You can see a little bit more cloud cover there, but generally pretty nice and sunny around San Antonio at the moment. Temperatures are rising. It's already 80 degrees in Divine. All right, let's take a look at the big picture across the state of Texas. We've got some showers south of Lubbock and close to the uh, Red River. This is all behind this front, which is currently pushing through south central Texas as we speak. Temperatures behind this front, yeah, they're cool, but they're not frigid. Much of the colder air is still up across the Rockies where it's in the 40s. Meanwhile, it's in the 50s in the Panhandle, so we do have a good 20 degree temperature spread across the state of Texas. However, in San Antonio, we'll be lucky if we see temperatures fall into the 60s in the coming mornings. We're likely going to be closer to about 70 degrees. The big impact from this front is not a temperature change. It's a drop in the humidity and the drop in the humidity should happen as early as about noon here around San Antonio. And in the afternoon, those dew points are going to be in the 50s. So when we're at the hottest part of the day in the later afternoon hours, when it's 92 degrees, it's going to be nice and comfortable outside with low humidity. And that'll continue into our Monday too. Monday afternoon dew points will be in the 50s. But by about late Tuesday, that's when we're going to see the return of the Gulf moisture. And so by the end of the week, it'll still be pretty sticky outside. Take a look at today's forecast. 20% chance through about 10 o'clock this morning for that isolated shower especially west of San Antonio. It'll be 86 at noon. We'll see mostly sunny skies and it'll be a bit breezy with winds gusting up to 20 miles per hour from the northeast. So a nice stout wind as well from the north. Sunsets at 744. If you have any Sunday night plans, it's going to be pretty pleasant. In the low 80s with low humidity, that's pretty nice. Take a look at high temperatures today. Again, it's still going to be a warm one even when this front moves through. It's just not going to be as humid. Our average high temperature for the day is 91. We'll be a little bit warmer than that in San Antonio at 92. It'll be 94 in Seguin, 93 in Nixon Smiley, 95 in Gonzalez, 90 in a Lotus, 90 in Bernie, 92 in Hondo, and even in the upper 80s, potentially up in the hill country. Take a look at your forecast as you plan your week. The mornings I'm excited about are Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday morning. Temperatures around San Antonio will be close to 70. It might even feel a little crisp in the morning hours if you wake up early enough uh, before about seven o'clock. And then in the hill country, It'll be in the 60s, so pretty nice in the mornings. Afternoons will be on the warm side, though. High temperatures will be in the mid 90s for most of next week. Sarah and Max. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 851, 76 degrees out. All right, chronic pain that's getting worse. Tomorrow on GMSA, new advice from experts on how to deal with it. And like we've been talking about throughout the morning, we're taking a live look at a Tower of America's first responders hundreds of first responders from around the state, around the country, starting to climb the Tower of America's honoring the hundreds of first responders who sacrificed their lives 21 years ago on 9-11. All right, we're taking you back out live to the 
San Antonio 9-11 Memorial Climb. It is kicked off. First responders from across the state and country joined by civilians paying tribute to the first responders killed at the World Trade Towers. We'll have more on this story on air and online throughout the day.